Welcome back to designing a website in Figma. In today's video, we are going to be focusing on the website footer, which is the last part of website that you get at the very bottom. Usually you get a couple of links, some additional useful information and also links to social media. And with that in mind, let's get started. In the previous episodes of designing a website in Figma, we have created this website along with these components and instances of these components. And to start building the website footer, I'm going to use an instance of the logo component. So let me go to assets over here and then look for a logo, which is right here. And, and I'm going to drag and drop that onto my page. So here I have the logo. Then also I'm going to use the text tool to type in, let's say 2017 to 2023 company name. Let me also paste in the copyright sign and then change the text style to paragraph text. So paragraph body text. Then what I'm going to do is create an icon for social media. So let me use let me use a frame that will be 32 pixels tall and wide. And I'm going to turn this into a component and rename this component to social media icon. And we are going to have individual variants of the, so the social media icon. We're gonna have like multiple social networks like for example, YouTube and maybe Twitter and maybe also Instagram, right? So we're gonna have these three social media icons. And uh, since I prepared a component like this, uh, it doesn't matter that I don't have these icons yet. I'm going to use an instance of this icon and paste that right here and then copy that two times so that we get once YouTube, then we get uh, Twitter, right? And then we get the Instagram one. So now, now when I'm going to use uh, the actual website social media logos, then I can just take that logo, right? So pretend this is, uh, this is the company logo and I can paste that here and it's going to update across our um, across our footer. So for now, let's leave this blank. And what I'm going to do is select these three social media icons and press Shift A. This is going to create an auto layout and I'm going to rename this auto layout by pressing Command R and then typing in social media links links. And then with all these three elements in one place, the logo, this uh, text, copyright and company name, I'm going to select all of these and press shift A. This is going to again create an auto layout that I'm going to rename row one. And then I'm going to set the auto layout spacing to auto so that we get kind of this type of behavior where the right element is going to be all the way on the right side. And these, these spacing are going to be adjusted according to the total width of this element, right? So since that is done, let me actually drag this out to be 1,152, 1,152. So that's going to be our first row of our footer. Then I'm going to use my pen tool by pressing P on my keyboard clicking once and holding shift and clicking for the second time, press enter and then make this white and move that over here. So that's going to be our section divider between the first row and the rest. The next thing I'm going to do is duplicate this text object, type in a one, maybe we, we are going to use underline for this. Um, we will also make this white. So that's going to be link one, maybe two and three, link two and link three. And then I'm going to also take these three, shift A to create an auto layout, 24 in spacing and rename this to column, right? So we're going to, we are currently creating the second row and the first column of links. I would say we're going to have like maybe three of these, right? So let me duplicate this, duplicate these. And I now have three columns of links. What I'm going to do is of course, select all these three and then press enter. And under horizontal resizing with all these text objects selected, I'm going to go for fill container, right? So let's just recap what we did here. Let's just make sure we are on the same page. So 
we have three order layouts. Each of these order layouts contains three text objects, link one, two, and three. The order layout is called column one, and then two and three and it has spacing of 24 and also when I change the size of this auto layout these individual text objects are gonna adjust their size as well according to the size of this overall auto layout, right? So that's what we have right now and we have these three times, right? So now let me select these three columns that we have, press shift A to create an auto layout again and rename this to row Two, right so this is going to be the second row and this second row is also going to be 1152 pixels wide we actually don't have to type in the precise value because we're going to do one thing and that's selecting row number one this divider and then row number two select all these three all these three things and then pressing shift a to create a footer container that I'm also gonna type in into the overall name of this auto layout. So that's footer container, right? And this footer container is gonna be fixed width, right? So this one, this is where we set the total width. So that's gonna be 1152, as you can see here. And then individual elements of this footer container, they are going to be fill container. They are going to take up the size, they are going to fill the overall width of this footer container. So with these individual elements of this footer container selected, right, I'm going to go over here and then select fill container. As you can see, the size of these objects changed to match the total width of this container. And right now, when I do this, you can see how the divider, this line, as well as the row number one and row number two is now changing the size, right? So that's what we want to go for. It's kind of responsive. And with this being done, we have the footer container kind of responsive like this. And what I'm going to do now is press Shift A again. That's going to create an auto layout on top of the footer container auto layout. Right, so we have an auto layout within an auto layout. I'm going to rename this frame four to footer, right? So this is gonna be a whole section. This section is gonna be fixed width and it's gonna be 1440 points wide. It's gonna be centered, right? Top center or actually um, center alignment like this. Then in terms of horizontal padding, that's gonna have no padding actually because it's centered, right? And vertical padding, I think we could make that 96. We will see if that's maybe too much or maybe too little. Um, I want to keep that open for now. But in any case, this middle, uh, this footer container, that's gonna be, we changed that uh, actually. We have to set this to 1152, right? So 1152 and yeah. So 1,152, as I mentioned in previous videos, is actually the total width of these 12 columns, which is the 12 column system that we are using for this website. Um, so that's why we are setting this value, right? So now with this footer section finished, uh, this footer section kind of the basic structure is now in place. Let me add a fill. Right, so I'm gonna add a fill, but the fill is not gonna be white, it's gonna be black. So I'm gonna change that right here by pressing that, uh, by setting this value to, to zero. And obviously, as you can see, we don't see this text right here within row number one. So that's gonna have to be changed to white as well, right? And then the logo, um, now here's the, here's the cool thing about uh, using a component like this. If I now change the logo, by going to selection colors and I'm gonna again set that to white you can see that this company logo is an instance of a component of a logo placeholder component right and if I go now to the logo placeholder component uh, you can see that I can take for example this part of the logo and modify the logo in in some way right in this way for example I move that behind the text. And if I now return to the instance, you can see it changed the layout, but it kept the color, right? So Figma um, kind of understood that we wanna change, we wanna override this color by a different color, but at the same time, it still respects the layout 
of this component. So that's very powerful. It's confusing at first before you understand this whole logic of components and overrides, but uh, this is a good example to understand uh, kind of this interaction on, right? So you can have a modified component and you can modify just something uh, fr uh, from that component. And that doesn't mean that the, uh, the link is broken, it just means that specific value is being changed, right? So let me actually change that back uh, by pressing Command Z multiple times. And also I think we could make something, we could adjust these columns in, in some way. So. Um, why don't I actually move that? Uh, first of all, I'm gonna turn this into a component, right? First of all, because we will be using the footer section on multiple pages and I don't want to have any kind of inconsistency, right? We are using the component-based approach, as you can remember. You can probably remember this phrase from previous episodes. Um, anyway, um, I think, again, for this, I think it would be good if these links, right, began also kind of fell into this grid system. Since it's aligned to the left, I think this object should be begin over here or over here. So that means that each of these columns should span either two or three columns, right? So let's actually do three. Let's do three, which means that three columns is, I think, 270. Yeah, 270. So let me select this row in, uh, in this footer uh, section component. Let me select this row and actually then press enter and under width right here, I'm gonna type in 270. And then also additionally, I'm gonna press shift enter to select the parent element, the row number two, auto layout, and change the spacing to 24, which is the spacing we use uh, between our columns. And as you can see, that's gonna move the beginning of these objects exactly to align with the beginning of each column, right? Kind of falls into this system. All right, so that's finished. And I think uh, for this section, I think this contrast of black background and then white uh, kind of links and text and the logo maybe even, I think that's too strong. I think we could go easier on the eye and kind of, for example, select this divider and change the opacity to like 30, right? So this more subtle line, I think I like this one better, right? So we could also select these um, these columns and then individual, under individual color, I think we could go for also like 40, 50%, something like that. And um, then this one as well. So let's go for like 40, 50, go for 50. And the logo as well. I think I, I would make that let's say also 50%. I think that is more appropriate, like, like to have a smaller contrast because after all, the information that you're gonna show here is not that important, not as important as for example, this, uh, these sections right here. So I, I wouldn't be afraid to kind of make this um, muted in terms of contrast. So, as you can see, the only thing that's currently missing at this point are the social media icons, right? So let me actually, I'm just gonna look for these icons online. So give me a second. We are going for YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram. All right, so here I found some logos online uh, for YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram. And I'm going to make sure that all of these fit within a 32, 32 point container. And there are multiple ways to do this, but I think we could go for the one where you click on the image, on the image right here, and then go for fit. So this means whatever size is the, is the actual image, the fill of the image, the image fill is going to fit within, uh, so that there's the whole image is visible at all times, right? So it's gonna fit within the smallest dimension. And similar with the Twitter one, so fit and Instagram one. So that's gonna fit, all these are gonna fit. And then I'm gonna go select all these, right? And type in, in width 32 and height 32 as well. So that's gonna, or actually let's just go for 32 in the, in the width because that's just gonna 
yeah then individually I'm gonna set the height to 32 because we had aspect ratio locked or actually in the case of Twitter that's not necessary since these images are scaled to the right size let me actually and watch the instances right here when I now paste the YouTube logo right here we get it here as well similar to Twitter let me center that and then Instagram, right? And then I can also, of course, make sure that these um, instances, these variants don't have a background visible because we get this white square around them. So let me turn that off. And yeah, we get we get this, which is way better, I think. And so now it's, for, it's very easy to make adjustments. So if, for example, I wanted to make the spacing between these individual links uh, bigger, I can go to the social media links uh, container and then I can just put in any value in the auto layout spacing that I would like. I think 32 is going to work well. And here is the thing. So right now, when you take a look at this footer, you can see that obviously the most prominent element are the social media links. And I don't think that's really what we are trying to do here. So because of that reason, let me just highlight, right, set the color back to white for this text object and the logo as well to just make sure that logically or visually these are on the same level, right? So notice the difference how when both of these are visually prominent as opposed to when these are muted, you can see how these now seem as if they are the most important thing in the entire footer, but that's not the case. So I want to make it visually equal with these elements, right? And yeah, we are almost done. Let me just adjust the spacing between the divider and the rows. I think we could go for 40, right? For example, I think 40 sounds good. And then let me um, make sure spacing, right? So it's glued right on, on the bottom of the, the frequently asked questions section. And yeah, here we go. Now I'm gonna select this and make sure it has um, the same height as the content. So let's take a, let's recap for a bit. So all the main uh, elements of the homepage are now present on the page, I think, right? Just talking about the most basic template for a landing page, right? For a, for a website. So in the upcoming episodes, I think we are going to go through this page and make sure everything is final and polished. So the first thing we're gonna definitely do is focus on these icons. Then what I think we're gonna also just go over the overall visual style and make sure that all is kind of concise, that everything works well, and that also everything is set into one giant auto layout so that we can navigate this properly uh, in, in a prototype, right? So. Let me launch the prototype right now and show you what I mean. This footer, when I now click, uh, it's interactive, right? The frequently asked questions section is interactive, but as you can see, it's gonna push down individual um, accordions, but it's not pushing down the, the footer section, which is something that I would like to finalize in the upcoming episodes, right? So this is what we get right now. This is the footer that we have created today. If you'd like to see how I'm going to continue working on this project, definitely subscribe to this channel to join this creative journey uh, with uh, creating this fictional website. And also in uh, more upcoming videos, I would like to create more pages. I would like to create uh, the features page, maybe some customers page about us, uh, maybe some kind of uh, contact us page, and also maybe create the mobile version. So there is still quite a lot of stuff to do. So definitely stay tuned for upcoming episodes because there's a lot of things to cover. With that being said, thank you for watching this video all the way to the very end. Leave a like if this video helped you and I will see you in the next one.